Welcome to On the Sofa with Monia and Anna. This week I feel like a true cartoon queen sitting on my throne. I'm Anna and I present amazing colour combinations and texture of tartan. And today we're going to look at how these amazing tartans are woven and the fabric choices available to you. Monia trained in fashion and textiles and is virtually with me to share her hands-on knowledge. And Emily's a little bit camera shy, but she's running the tech behind the scenes and also has a degree in weaving. So she's our in-house tartan designer and we've got lots of expertise on hand to answer all your questions. So add your comments and, and questions online and we'll just answer them as we go. Hi, I'm Monia and I work in our Edinburgh shop. Um, I studied fashion here in Scotland along with textiles both in Scotland and in India. The very first stage of weaving is the wool, the raw material that comes from the trusty sheep and is spun into yarn. The specialised spinning companies deal with this first stage and the yarn is then dyed to the correct shape for each tartan. Emily's got a few cones on the screen there for you. The subtleties between each shade are really hard to see for an untrained eye, but actually can completely change the look of a tartan and that's why occasionally fabrics can be delayed if the dyeing process doesn't go quite as it should. The, the dyeing process accounts for the slight differences also that you might see from mill to mill and the colours. If you want an exact match of an existing fabric then you're always best to order swatch and just double check it or if you know exactly where it came from tell us the mill it came from and we can source it for you as we work with lots of different mills. And I've got here a good example of how these um, Colours can vary with the dress modern fabric. Um, and as you can see, the shades in the yellow are really quite different. So, order a swatch if you want an exact match. Traditionally, yarns and fabrics were dyed with plant or animal based dyes, um, or even just different coloured lamb or sheep wool. And so, tartans and Scottish fabrics had more muted and dull colours. Uh, this is also why the first tartans were thought to be just a two-coloured check. So the photo Emily's got on screen there is thought to be the oldest still existing swatch of tartan. And you can sort of see that it's just two colours there, black and a sort of brown colour. Go. Oh, hello to Tara and Haddington joining us. Um, so then in the 1860s, synthetic dyes were introduced to Scotland and the UK, and so brighter and darker colours appeared in fabrics. The red coloured dyes were the most expensive, which is why royalty and the upper classes chose to wear red-based tartans to show off their wealth. Um, so Anna there has got the Stuart Royal Tartan. Um, so you can see that is um, mostly red with the check on top and that's actually the Queen's official tartan. So I've got a few examples here as well of um, naturally dyed fabrics. So you can see that it's quite dull. This is sort of a, as close to a red colour as you could probably get. And um, hopefully you can see particularly on this one here that the, the colours um, are not very consistent. So you wouldn't get a very consistent colour across all of your fabric and it's not, um, yeah, you wouldn't get a very consistent colour um, so, and you can guarantee you would get the same colour every time as the different strengths of the batches would alter that. So now that we can get synthetic dyes you're guaranteed to get one consistent colour across all of your fabric and you can get the same colour every time so you can, you can match different items. So first up, um, the yarns rolled onto bobs, which are cones like these ones here. And these are then loaded onto a big rack, which feeds into the warping drum. And what exactly is warping? Well, this is the process of creating tension in the yarn. The drum spins round and round and creates the tension link lengthens before it's fed into the loop. So we've got a lot of people joining us. We've got Chris in Brittany. Hi. And we've got all of our staff members watching from home. We're sorry that we've uh, not said hello to you in previous weeks. And hello to Thelma in Germany as well. So warping um, used to be measured in L's. 
where an L is the unit of measurement from a man's elbow to the tip of the middle finger, which is very precise stuff. There were variations from country to country, with the Scottish L measuring 94 centimetres, um, the French on measuring 137.2 centimetres, and the German L measuring 57.9 centimetres. Um, in England, the L was usually 45 inches or a yard and a quarter, and this was this measurement was commonly used by tailors. And so a very fiddly bit comes next, and the different yarn colours are meticulously placed in order according to the design of the tartan. And the warped, still nice and tense yarns are passed through the loom lengthly, which is unsurprising as it's warped. Then the left is where the chapel takes the yarn and weaves it across the design. Our chart is beginning to take shape. And I do have with me today a old shuttle which you can maybe see here. And um, this bit here is called the pern. And this would come off, we'd wind the yarn round the pern and then it gets slotted back in and pushed down like this. And then there's little holes in the end that the yarn would then be fed through. And this moves across the loom and creates the weft. So just imagine doing all of this by hand in days gone by. And um, there's still some traditional Robbie looms in operation. And if you visit Harriet Watts School of Fashion and Textiles and Gala School, you can see an amazing collection of old looms. And Emily's put one of them there on the screen for you. So this is where um, I really normally like to do all of her weaving and how to hand weave and um, fabrics for the very first time. Uh, we've got a few more people joining us as well. We've got Lee in Florida and Mike in Dale from Duns. So hello to everyone joining us just now. Um, of course, uh, the, the shuttle flies back and forwards at an unbelievable speed and the noise is quite intense, which all adds to the atmosphere and feeling that you're part of the creation of something very special. It's also a sharp reminder of how easily things could go wrong if things were set up incorrectly or thread snapped. I think Emily's got a picture there of some fabric in the process of being woven as well. So this fabric is of really rigorous quality blocking when it comes off the room. And every single bit of the text hand and eye for any event by hand, sorry, by hand eye for any irregularities and imperfections, such as broken threads. And the ladies, um, and I say ladies, because it always seems to be ladies, I don't know why, repairing the fabric, they really are quite amazing and they have super fast flying fingers and endless patience as we go through each bit of cloth just checking it. So it's a painstaking job, but it does guarantee that every bit of cloth that we send out is absolutely perfect. The final stage um, of the process is finishing, um, which is maybe something quite unusual. You maybe don't expect the fabrics to be washed. <laughs> Um, and then it's dried. The one thing removes the lanolin and any impurities from it. And at this point, if there's any special finishes um, required, such as brushing and um, to give it a softer, fluffier finish, or a Teflon coating or anything else, then this is the stage where it would be applied. And we do have a blog on the website devoted entirely to finishing. Um, so we offer a few different weights um, of fabric and wools. So we've got a few examples there to show you what they might be suitable for. So the first one we've got is the eight ounce wool that Anna's holding. So this is our lightest weight of wool. Um, and we usually would use this for things like our hand fast ribbons or a garter and um, table runners as well. This is just because it's not, um, it's not heavy enough for fabric, eh, for clothing, sorry. But a small piece of tartan like that is it's really nice and it's it's a lightweight one. Oh, hi to Rebecca from Florida who tunes in to us every week. We're really glad that you could make it this week as well. And hi to Lorraine from Edinburgh too. 
Next up, we've got our 10 ounce wool, which is what we make most of our clothing from, as well as things like our cushions. So this one's a bit thicker, um, so it's really, it's a lot better for clothing, a lot more durable. Um, it's, still, it's still soft and it moves really nicely and drapes nicely. Well, um, and then we've got our 13 ounce wool. So this is a good option if you want something a bit heavier in your trousers or your kilt maybe, um, but you don't want to go for the full traditional heavy weight um, for your, your kilt. So it's maybe good if you're in a slightly colder climate. And then lastly, we've got our 16 ounce wool, which is our heaviest option. So Anna's got a 16 ounce heavyweight kilt there. And if you've ever been into the shop or met Anna and Emily at a pop-up shop, then I'm sure you'll have felt the difference between our 10 ounce and our 16 ounce kilts. And there's a very significant difference. As you'll feel, you'll know that um you'll know when you're wearing a 16 ounce kilt. Um, the 16 ounce wool is also great for upholstery, and the tartan throne that Anna's sitting on is actually upholstered in our Edinburgh tartan in a 16 ounce wool. There we go. <laughs> and so, other than the wools, we also offer poly mixes. So these are all machine washable fabrics. The poly cotton is nice and light. Um, so it's great for making tartan face masks or table linen. That's Anna's got some there. This is in a slightly more limited range of tartans and the, the checks are slightly different. So again, it's worth ordering a sample if you want to go for the cotton. The other option we've got is polyviscose. So this is hard wearing and it's very popular for children's clothing. And you might be surprised to hear, but also for car upholstery. And we've even supplied cloth to fit out a houseboat. And this is because it copes well with damp conditions. So, uh, at the end of our, um, our introduction to tartan and weaving. So I think we've got a few questions here. Um, Monia's in charge. She can see all the questions. So I'll let her read <laughs> the first one. So we have Lee asking how she would know if she is a Graham. So she's a Graham and she's asking how she would know if she's a Montrose or a Monteith Graham. So this depends very much um, how much you know about your ancestors and if you know exactly which area they came from. So the Grahams originated um, from the two different areas, from Antiff and, and Montrose. So it, it really depends how much you know about your ancestry and if you can trace that back and find out exactly which region. Um, then what we can do a little bit, I think Emily will maybe keep hold of your details and we can maybe do a bit more research and give you a hand to look into that if you like. Uh, Rebecca is also asking how you wash the different weights of wool. So the eight ounce wool you can wash on a you can do a machine wash on a wool cycle, and we also recommend a wool detergent as well. The other weights are dry clean only, although a soft brush will get most things out of the fabric. The wool is quite forgiving in that way. Um, and we also have Tara asking if the fabric for trousers is soft or itchy. So we would normally use a 10 ounce tool for, um, for trousers, in which has a really nice soft finish. And we can to line trousers to the knee. You can fully line them if you want them, but generally people have them just lined to the knee on the front. And then that's enough because it is really a very nice soft fabric, that one. If you're going for a really heavyweight trouser and you want a 13 or 16 ounce trouser, then definitely fully line those for you. Um, we have also been asked. Oh, so um, we've also got some more info for Lee, who was looking if she's um, to know if she's a Graham of Montrose or Monteith. So we also suggest um, that the clan society might be able to help and give a bit more information on which area your, your clan maybe originated from, which would help with which type of Graham you are. So we've also got, um, can I spray your, can I spray my wool with a waterproofing or a water repellent spray? So we 
wouldn't really advise this in case the spray affects the colours in the fabric or at least test it on a small piece first of all as without checking all the contents of the spray we can't guarantee it won't have an effect. And will it is shower proof um, and has a degree of waterproofing in it naturally which um, helps keep the sheep warm and dry naturally with their wool. Oh, and we've got Tara asking another question. She's asking if you have a favourite tartan. Oh, I have quite a few favourites. That's why I have to have my clothes made in. I'm wearing Stuart Black today, which I really like because it coordinates with so many different things. And it's really smart and got a nice red lining on this jacket, so I like a bit of red. Um, I also, one of my favourites that I, a jacket I wear a lot is a New York City tartan, which we have made for when we went out and did tartans in New York. And it's really lovely um, soft greens and blues with like an orangey stripe to it. That's another of my favourites. And But I am actually a McGregor, um, which is a really bold red, green and white tartan. Um, my surname's white, but we wear McGregor. And I love it on my husband's kilt. It's really, really not necessarily my favourite for wearing myself, but I do really like it in a kilt. So there's some things I like on like a little piece and accessory, and um, another tartan I prefer on a bigger piece. So it varies. What about you, Maya? What's your favourite? Again, I, I think I'm the same. It depends if I'm wearing it head to toe or if it's a small a small piece. Um, I really love the cloud dress, which is very yellow and very bold. Um, I think just because yellow is one of my favourite colours is but my I recently had some trousers made in young tartan so they still got a yellow stripe in them which I really like but maybe with my hair colour suits me a bit better than a full yellow outfit um, and McLeod is actually our clan of the month which is making me rather happy so <laughs> seeing all the McLeod things um, on our social media which is really great. So I think I think I would say McLeod is my favourite at the moment anyway. It changes quite often. Uh, we have also been asked if you can treat your fabric to be fire resistant. So, fire retardant to domestic standards. Um, but if you need it for a commercial situation, then you, it can be treated. We do need to do a minimum of 12 metres at a time um, and it costs about four times a metre to do this but it, it can certainly be done. Oh, hi to Luke who has joined us. He's a descendant of the Douglas clan so thanks for coming to our, our fabric week. Uh, we've got another question come in about um, fabric for curtains and which one is the, the best to use for your curtains. So we would normally traditionally use a 10 ounce wool um, for the curtains. It's a, it's a light, fairly lightweight, but it's still a nice warm fabric and it hangs, it drapes really nicely. And um, if you've got a really proper Scottish drafty house, an old house then, and you want some really warm curtains, then go for a 16 ounce that will really cut through those, those drafts for you. And um, if you want a cheaper option, we do have a polyviscose fabric as well. Um, it's much you're much more limited in your choice of tartans, but it is it is a much more cost effective option. Um, and one you mentioned earlier, if you're doing something, if it gets damp, maybe it's a bathroom or like a houseboat that we did, or random things <laughs> like that, um, kitchens, and you, or you maybe want to wash the curtains often, then polyviscose is also a good option. Uh, we have also been asked how to design a tartan, as this is something that we do. So Emily is our in-house expert on all of this and has trained in tartan design. We should really be making her answer this, but she's, she's got her head down behind the computer and we can't reach her since we're all in the so she's, she's lucky. But um, it's really fun. Um, designing a tartan. So what we tend to do is we would start off with a mood board. You would tell us what colours you want to use. Are they influenced by landscapes? Are they influenced by different themes or corporate colours or, or what, what are the influences? And um, for example we work with Doddy who 
easier and uh, it's got a shrink repair to design and we make all the suits for him because we have a lot of fun doing that. So Doddy wanted his own tartan and to raise funds for NND and um, so we had a lot of fun putting that together and Doddy said he wanted all the colours of all the different um, rugby teams that he played, played for in his life and um, so we, we got all those colours onto a mood board and looked at how we could combine them. So um, once we have gone through that stage, we then produce our CAD, so a computer-aided design, and that will uh, print out for you to see a couple of different options of layouts and, and how things would work. Um, and we also give you the actual threads at that point as well, so you can see the, the, the colours in real life. Um, and then once you approve those, once you choose the, the design that you prefer, then um, we go through the design. Um, and part of that process is you can have your cut back and registered so that gets registered on the um, Scottish Cut and Register. We, we do all of that for you and you've got a certificate um, registered and that then belongs to you and uh, only you can use that for or authorise its use um, or that design. That's a good fun to think of, and if you fancy doing it, just get in touch and Emily will walk you through it and, and tell you what can be done. <laughs> Oh, so we have Thelma also asking what the Morrison tartan looks like. So I think Emily on the tech um, can send you a photo of that because I think there are a couple of different colour options as well with the Morrison. And we also offer um, clan consultations as well with that so you can get a bit more information and see your different, your different tartan options. Yeah, so Emily will reply later with the pictures of the Morrison tartan. But I think that is all of our questions tonight. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone, and thanks for all your questions. It's always good fun to be put on the spot. And hopefully you've learned lots about the Aberdeen thing. If you've got any more questions, just pop them um, on an email or comment here and we'll answer them for you. Um, for next week, we thought we'd open the floor up to you. Uh, what would you like to learn more about? What What are the hot topics that you'd like to have discussed? If you can let us know, and um, we'll see which ones are the most popular, and um, we'll use these to um, decide what we're going to talk about over the, the next few weeks. But thank you very much for joining us. It's been really good fun, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Thank you.